All right, this is from chapter four, and we're really into chapter five already. But I got a special request, and so I thought I'd meet it. This is one with static friction. In this particular problem, uh, you were told uh, that it took uh, 150 newtons just to get the box going. I don't know if you've ever tried shoving anything, but you try shoving it, uh, and it's hard, and then it slips, and a lot of times you shove things and you do damage because it takes a lot of force to get it going, but once you get it going, it takes less force, and it, a graph of that would look like this. It get it more force, more force, more force, and then less force to keep it moving, and this is known as the static friction, force of static friction, and it's less force to keep it motion kinetic friction is inevitably less than static friction. Once you get something moving, it's easier to keep it moving than it is to get it. So this is a question. If I apply uh, 150 newtons of force, and, uh, and you need that just to get it going, so we can say that basically that's this force of static friction is 150 newtons. We just get it going. The coefficient of static is, uh, I don't know, I'm going to make these up. I don't, we'll say 0.5. Coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.4. The question comes down to what's the acceleration of the system. And you look at it and you go, all right, well, and then you start playing with the pieces. I know the force of static friction. I also know the force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal. So the force of static friction divided by the coefficient of static friction would be equal to the normal force. I could find the normal force. Why would I need that? Well, I gotta go somewhere, and I'm gonna start working with pieces. And I'm working with static friction, which I've got. I'm working with the coefficient of static friction, which I got. So I might as well find normal force. That might come in handy. And so let's say I've got a um, what 150 newtons divided by 0.5 is going to give me a normal force equal to 300 newtons. Well, once I get it moving. I now only have to overcome kinetic friction. So the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Haha, <laughs> look at this. I got my normal force. Now it's coming in handy. So the force of kinetic friction is going to be equal to 0.4 times 300 newtons. And 0.4 times 300 newtons comes out to be a force of kinetic friction equal to 3 times 4 is 12, a couple extra zeros, 120 newtons. So I'm applying 150 newtons. But now, once I get it moving, I only need 120 newtons to overcome static friction. But the problem, we're told, and in real life, once you get that 150 newtons and you're shoving on something with 150 newtons, it's kind of hard to back off back to 120 because and, and, and then you do damage the thing accelerates it before you know it it's taken off on you and this is the problem to solve to see how fast it accelerates well uh, I need net force and my net force is going to be uh, well let's see I'm applying 150 newtons of force and 120 newtons of that is going to be taken up with the force of kinetic friction so minus 120 newtons so my net force in this problem is going to be equal to 30 newtons. So I've got a net force. That's a good thing. All right, let's get another color out here. And uh, now I need acceleration. <coughs> Excuse me. Acceleration is equal to force, net force, divided by the mass of the system. Okay. Well, I my net force I've got, but I don't know the mass of the system. But I know the normal force. Wait a minute. Normal force is equal to mg cosine of the angle of whatever the surface we're on. If we're on a ramp, well, I'm on a horizontal surface. The cosine of zero degrees would be one. So my normal force is equal to m times g times one, which I can just ignore. So my mass is normal force divided by g. So that's going to be 300 newtons divided by uh, 9.8 meters per second squared and that's going to give me a mass equal to uh, 300 off by just a fraction let's say 30.6 kilograms so 30.6 kilograms so my acceleration is going to be equal to my sum of my forces divided by my mass so that's going to be 30 newtons divided by 30.6 kilograms and I'm going to come up with an acceleration roughly equal to 
um, what uh, thirty point about point nine eight maybe meters per second squared. A lot of little steps, none of them hard, and all of them leading to the solution of the problem. That's the way it's going to be with all of them for the rest of the year, guys. A lot of little steps, none of them hard, leading to the end. Well, there you go. Enjoy.